How did you decide to write Desk 99? 88. 88. 88. I'm thinking of Prince here. I'm sorry. It's all right. Uh, my first one, is, thank you, Joe. Thank, thank you for the, the history and the, the tradition of what you do in these interviews. I've looked at the list of people, and you've done this now close to 20 years and had an impressive <coughs> roster of people, so it's an honor to share in that. Uh, my wife, Connie Schultz, Connie is a, um, is a Pulitzer Prize winner in journalism and won the Pulitzer in, in, at the Cleveland Plain Dealer, the only one ever to do that. And yeah. she was visiting with her editors at Random House today, and her book, uh, her novel, her first novel, um, called The Daughters of Erie Town, will come out in June. So uh, anyway, so Connie is here also. <laughs> Connie and Joe were talking backstage. Uh, the, the idea came from this. In 2007, my first year in the Senate, um, we were everything in the Senate in terms of office space and place on the floor and committees is pretty much done by seniority. There were 10 freshmen, so the last 10 desks on the Senate floor were the desks that the 10 freshmen were going to sit at. And so we each chose where we wanted to sit. And I was, so I was scurrying around the Senate floor. I, I didn't think it really mattered where you sat because there were, you weren't sitting behind a pillar at Yankee Stadium. I mean, they were good seats. So I started, a senator told me that senators sign their names in their desk drawers. So I began to pull out one by one the drawers and move the committee reports and the, in the legislative sheets and all in the, in the desk drawer. And the one that, that, that interested me the most, it said McGovern, South Dakota, Gore, Tennessee, Hugo Black, Alabama, and then it just said one word, Kennedy. So I went over to Ted, who sat four desks away. This was in 2007. I said, Ted, come over here a second, which, and he walks over. And I, I showed him, and I said, which brother's desk is this? And he said, well, it's got to be Bobby's because I sit at Jack's desk. <laughs> so I thought, I looked at the other names, and um, I, I've always believed that, that study of history makes you understand how to do your job better and maybe think about the future better. And I, I wrote this book because I, I see sort of the history of the Senate. Um, the same reason I, I wear this lapel pin. This is a depiction of a canary in a birdcage. It was given to me 20 years ago at a Workers' Memorial Day rally in Lorain, Ohio, west of Cleveland on the banks of Lake Erie. And you may know the mine worker 120 years ago took the canary down in the mines. If the canary died, the mine worker knew he had to get out of the mines. He had no union strong enough or government that cared enough in those days to protect him. So he was on his own. And I, I've thought of the progressive victories that this pen symbolizes to me, the, the, the victories of the role of government can be a positive force in people's lives, not the way Donald Trump thinks about it, but the way that I think about it. And that's everything from civil rights to Medicare to safe drinking water to clean air. Um, Doctor and I were talking about the cleanup of Lake Erie because we have a strong EPA, or we did have a strong EPA in those days. Um, women's rights, mine safety, seat belts, all the things that government's done to make us live help, help, healthier, longer lives. And so that's what this book's really about, to study, to, to do a study of each of these eight senators and their contributions to a more progressive country as we moved into progressive eras and the <coughs> Roosevelt years and the Johnson years and all the gains as a country made from that. So that's where the idea came from. And how is, just walk us through, if you're elected, if somebody in the audience is elected senator in 2020, how are you assigned a desk? Do you get a choose? Do you get a? Is it like a free for all? Everybody going for a desk, or is it just random lottery? Well, you, or you, how you does it work? Seniority. The, the, the seniority. So I'm 28th or 9th in seniority now. So if um, if I want to move my desk, I can. I get the 29th choice of some. Most senators will stay in the desk they hold. This is way inside baseball. That's mm -hmm. not all that interesting. But you have. For, for me, it's interesting. <laughs> so all the new sen that there's, if there's a dozen new senators in 2021, and I hope there is, if I could say, I'd like to see a new senator in place of Lindsey Graham, for instance, and a new senator in place of Mitch McConnell, and a new senator, I could go down the list. Um, but for those that are new, they, whatever seats more senior members haven't taken, whichever desks, they then choose among those desks. Now, in the center aisle, there's literally, they say, cross the aisle. The center aisle, on this side, if, if, if you're the Senate, if I'm, if I'm the presiding officer of the Senate right now, the desk, there would be a line down the middle. The Democrats are on this side, and the Republicans are where Connie's sitting. The Republicans are on that side where Michelle's sitting. 
Uh, and then literally, if the Democrats would gain five seats, <coughs> they would unscrew five desks on the Republican side and literally move them to the Democratic side. It's a tradition. And the, um, so when I came in, well, in, in 2009, after President Obama was elected, <coughs> there were 60 Democrats and 40 Republicans. So if you looked at the Democratic side, these desks were pretty close together, and you look at the Republican side, they were sparsely <laughs> sparsely <laughs> distributed. So you, you can tell that, but these desks, um, it's been a tradition for 100 years. Harry Truman signed 10 different desks. Mm. Every time he moved a, a place, he moved to a different desk. Um, <coughs> I signed just one, and I signed it this year with my but, grandchildren. But if you wanted to decide, like if this desk means a lot to you because of Bobby Kennedy, Al Gore Sr., and others, uh, or could you stay there? Could you basically yeah, stay desk, there? Yes, uh, this okay. desk will be mine through my whole. So you don't have to play musical chess. No, I don't have to. You only you only move if you want to move, mm -hmm. and if you want to move, I could. If there's a space, I could move my desk itself, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to stay where I am. 